Welcome everyone to this next talk by Holland Fintech, uh, where we're going to dive into the market developments and of course, some of the great companies that are taking part in that. Uh, I've got a great guest today, Anastasia Tench from Noda. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Don. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah, definitely very nice to have you on the show. And um, well, as Noda is in payments, we'd really love to dive into the world of payments uh, and banking today. Uh, as a COO, you're in the midst of all a lot of exciting developments, I believe, from uh, compliance to DevOps, uh, probably, and everything in between. Uh, so I'd love to explore with you uh, what's going on there and, of course, expand further into the fintech field and see what's going on. Um, yeah, maybe to give it a start, um, uh, can you tell a little bit about uh, Noda? What, uh, what is Noda up to? Uh, I think it's a uh, fits into a really nice trend of uh, embedded payments uh, and it's a really nice component, but how does that work? Noda is open banking product, basically. So mm -hmm. we, uh, our core product is open banking and we offer uh, such uh, technology, payment initiation uh, services for the online merchants at the moment. We are in a wide range of industries. Uh, so basically any online merchants that uh, offer any services or products online can use uh, Noda uh, as an alternative to card payments or any other payments online, basically. Okay. And so is it like a development kit that they can integrate it into their uh, software or platform directly? Yes, absolutely. So we usually help on any stage of integration of our uh, payment. It's uh, uh, like a payment initiation button, basically, that works the same as a uh, field for card payments or PayPal or anything similar. Uh, so we always uh, give support to any merchants that want to integrate our product in their website. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes, so we, we support on, on every stage uh, of this. And uh, depending on their needs, uh, we uh, develop our own actually product design, design of the button that fits the website, for example, for any merchant. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes, so we give this. And also if there is any need of anything extra arises, we also can provide such uh, help uh, to our merchants and um, we also do any white labeling so basically we don't have to put our label on the button it can be anything that merchant desires okay and, and so do you, how do you see that develop because i think it's interesting to see that um, let's say the, the 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 industry used to be shaped fairly traditional in a different different bucket but i i find it very funny to see that a lot of uh, non-financial firms are building payment capabilities or want to basically draw much more of the technology closer to them. Do you actually see the same thing with your customers that they actually want to work much closer with you and, and basically really be more on top of the development of also the payment flow? Yes, absolutely. So we have a lot of customers that use the traditional methods of payments, which is card payments usually. Mm -hmm. And now there is, a, I think it's a big market share for open banking right now. This is something really emerging right now in the industry. And uh, a lot of merchants are coming to us uh, from the industries that usually did not. Uh, use something like open banking or direct or instant payments, for example. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting to see uh, how the mer uh, the merchant pool is growing, that the industries are very different uh, from where the merchants are coming. For example, travel industry or any e-commerce that usually required and usually used uh, card payments and uh, there was uh, uh, some significant portion of the market that were using card payments now we have uh, a lot of merchants that benefit from instant payments they can um, offer their products or services much faster than before. They don't have to wait for any payment confirmations and so on. So yeah. I think uh, that's uh, really good. We have a lot of growth in the, that area. So, and so can you explain maybe a bit for the, for the customers that don't know your solution that well, sort of what does the flow look like, right? So they, they, they encounter a Noda button, button on a website, then what happens? Uh, basically, uh, for any customer located um, basically in any location, uh, Noda initiates uh, the payment uh, from the um, 
app, uh, banking app of a customer. So for the first time when the customer is paying with Noda, there is a choice uh, of the bank. And this is something uh, technical that we provide that the, the customer is recognized by uh, their location and the uh, he's instantly offered the banks that are in his location. For example, mm -hmm. if uh, mm -hmm. uh, the customer is in UK, he's uh, offered the most um, known high streets bank in UK, like Barclays or Lloyds and so on, or yeah. given the choice to choose his own bank uh, to which he has uh, his own banking, banking app. It can be used on a mobile phone and can also be used uh, on a computer if we're thinking about uh, we older generations, for example, that don't use banking apps. Um, so the Noda basically initiates the payment uh, through the banking app. And uh, every, uh, the only thing the customer basically needs to do is to confirm the payment. The amount of payment, the merchant that receives the transaction is already mm -hmm. shown. Uh, and uh, the only thing the customer basically needs to do is to confirm the payment. So uh, the payment is, is instant. It's a bank-to-bank -bank payment as open banking yep. works. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, the, there is a lot of value to it because the customer doesn't need to do the lengthy procedure of entering their card number or confirming anything um so i think yeah, yeah instant payments is in the forefront right now and um a great alternative to the card payments and also safer in a lot of ways yeah and so do, does it work well uh, across europe because i know also different geographies actually also have their own habits and own platforms that could also be uh, in the way basically of these kind of solutions how do you see that developing? Is it growing together to a more uniform market across Europe, or do you see that you actually still have to tailor solutions country by country? Um, I think it's pretty good across Europe. The only difference between Europe and UK that there is an element of uh, account information uh, in it. Uh, in mm -hmm. Europe, uh, in order to confirm the transactions in some places, you have to enter your IBAN. But that's only the first time the customer is using the app, for example. So now we're also developing our technology so it's easier for the customer obviously not all the customers remember or have the access to their iban immediately mm -hmm. so yep. there is some challenges in e europe uh, it's a bit more difficult than in uk uh, however we are working on it generally the uh, to develop the technology so it's as much as possible easier for the customer to confirm payments in europe as well and it's mm -hmm. been going really well and uh, yeah right now uh, the challenge is only this and only the first time the customer is using uh, open banking for example in europe after yep. that we have the access to their information uh, with the consent of course uh, mm -hmm. so yeah i think it's pretty much the same and i think it's pretty much unified across all the banks in europe as well yeah quite interesting and so um i think you're you're based out of uh, malta right uh I'm myself just... yes yeah but it's Our also team, where, where, where Noda has a license, uh, right? Or? Uh, we do have a license in UK, actually. Uh, but okay. our team is, uh, with the, we have a presence in UK, uh, obviously. And uh, some of our team is in UK, but uh, most of our team is completely remote. We're trying to follow up to the modern day trends of remote working, not limiting our team to the location or uh, specific uh, working hours or things like that. We're working to the result uh, so and it's been working pretty well but yes myself i'm based in malta right now okay better climate than where i am uh, i think uh, <laughs> so well, well done uh, but uh, so curious about it because what you touched upon also intrigues me I, i've actually been having a lot of conversations lately at the tech conferences uh, with people about um, work habits uh, and organizing uh, basically on-premise uh, and remote work uh, and balancing that actually. Uh, we seem to be stuck in a rhythm after COVID that's sort of hard to change, which has a lot of focus on remotely. But I still see also that increasingly people are also a bit worried about what it does in the long term with the, uh, the coherence of teams, uh, with the learning capabilities that teams have, uh, as well as creativity uh, that was, could also be hampered by the fact that you're actually not together in a place uh, where you have a much stronger influence on each other. What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, that's probably also something that's on your plate as a COO uh, somewhere. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, I think uh, basically myself, I am all pro the remote work. Uh, I think uh, I have been less time in the office in 2021 myself, and uh, the same goes for our CEO, I think. But we do try to, to, to combat this problem or possible problem. We do try to collect uh, people's uh, people for team building events, for example, in their yeah. respective locations. So we have locations when there is most of our team or more people from our team. And yeah. also we we do uh, every week we do whole team meetings. Uh, it's uh, online, but we do share all the news from all the departments together and so on. So we do try and keep the team together at every possibility we do uh, have team buildings in different locations where it's easy to access uh, um, where it's easy to get basically for all the people that work in our remote teams now actually one is coming uh, in one week we're meeting all together in turkey uh, yeah. the whole node team so we're trying to combat this problem of people feeling like they're separated uh, from the team or something like that so we we try to keep up and uh, meet together every week and uh, so i don't i don't as a ceo basically i don't see big problems in this area so people are still communicating we have an amazing uh, working app uh, slack mm -hmm. i don't know if you know it yeah. so mm -hmm. we're communicating in all the channels we have a lot of ways of uh, interacting with each other so uh, right now i think it's uh, it's great to have a remote work it gives the flexibility uh, for everyone and also uh, probably a space uh, and more time for the creativity that you mentioned that the people are actually have more time to do things in their own terms and like be inspired and come up with the new things and ideas and products and brainstorm and so on. No, actually, I, th I think there's there's a lot of ways to try and solve this puzzle. And I think we're really on sort of a discovery here, I think, across the board uh, for everyone. Uh, but nice to hear how you are you're tackling this and uh, yeah, uh, for once in a while, getting together in uh, nice locations yeah. like in Turkey is definitely, of course, uh, also appealing, uh, I can imagine. But um, nice. And so uh, um, maybe also, right, so you, you mentioned also the license in the in the UK uh, and, and others. I'm curious about how you see that, uh, that developing, right? So I think there's a lot of initiatives currently in the payment market. Uh, when you see, for example, we're talking about the instant payments, which is, a uh, right, the next level of open banking is coming up. Uh, the the SPAA is uh, is coming up. The next uh, next talk about the evolution of uh, SEPA. Uh, there's a lot coming your way. Uh, first of all, how do you manage all that and and try to sort of keep an eye out for the long term horizon when things are coming up so fast uh, as they do currently? I mean, we we're trying to keep up, but we're also focusing on the product we already have to improve it for our clients and so on. Um, we do follow, basically our focus is open banking right now. Of course, open finance is an extension of open banking. We're reviewing the possibilities there in that area. Uh, we are focusing right now on expanding in different markets. For example, we are following the open banking, where the open banking is going, which countries. Or uh, the reason why we have license in UK first, and also pre Brexit, actually, it was very convenient because uh, you could have a passporting in all the European countries as well, and you mm -hmm. could work in the whole market. Yeah. Uh, the reason why we had this license in UK first is because the UK was in the forefront of open banking, basically. Uh, so right now we're we're following the trend and checking the regulations in different countries and different markets outside of Europe and different continents, basically. Uh, and we are going to the right now. The we already um, uh, applying for the license in Canada. Uh, we're registering company in Australia. We're looking at Asian countries, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and so on. So we're trying to following the follow the trend of open banking because in Europe and UK it's very developed, but in UK, we were not behind the trend, but we were not the first comers uh, in terms of open banking. There was a few players in the market already, uh, which is our respected competitors right now. Mm -hmm. yep. But in uh, basically because we did so well with the open banking, 
we want to be in the forefront in the other places where open banking is still in the in the form of regulation or proposal or something like that so we want to fix maybe not the mistake but the, the our lateness in the first uh in the first part where in UK we were a little bit behind, now we catch up and uh, I think Noda is quite well-known name in certain industries already, uh, but in the other countries we want to be in the forefront basically. So that's the way, that is the direction we're developing right now, but also of course we're following and looking at the market trends on the um, things and regulations maybe and the, what products we can develop from those trends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I think indeed, let's say open banking is not really standing still, right? So you've got the uh, PSD yeah. two evaluation, we've got uh, open finance uh, working groups uh, also very active at the uh, European level, uh, trying to rethink uh, sort of the way uh, well, open finance should be perhaps the next level beyond open banking. And of course, you've got all the general data regulation also uh, moving at quite a fast pace, uh, which potentially would lead to a much more general open data framework at some point. Will be quite interesting to see where 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 that might be heading. Is that something that you're also engaged with? I mean, are you in talks with regulators from time to time about these developments, uh, for example? Uh, we're following. Uh, basically, we're following the news. So we're following. We're checking the regulations. We are not in talk in particular with the regulators, but we have consultants basically in uh, every area that are keeping us informed about the new developments, about something that we might consider in terms of regulation and so on. Uh, so we're still looking at the market, but as I said, right now the focus is on existing product and uh, on the developing in the new markets. Okay, uh, clear. Uh, in any case, I think there's only more uh, exciting opportunities coming, uh, I think, uh, from that perspective, if the market is opening up more. So that's, uh, that's Absolutely. nice. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, so what, what kind of uh, 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 industries are you particularly seeing traction with uh, with your product? Is that, do you see that specifically either uh, gaming or uh, on marketplaces or e-commerce? What, what's what's where the place where you see the most traction at the moment? Uh, basically, at the moment, uh, we have quite a success in gaming, iGaming, gambling industry. Mm -hmm. um, I, as I was mentioning, the industries where our Noda name is already uh, well known, it's uh, gaming in particular. We participate in a lot of conferences with, where it's actually nice uh, to see how uh, participants are coming to say hi and saying that they know our product and uh, uh, right now I think in gaming uh, gaming industry uh, where uh, we don't actively attract customers from our own side that comes customers are coming to us which is great actually yep. um, even though it's a high risk industry and there is about particular risks that coming with it we're happy to be uh on forefront there to be quite a well-known name in that industry uh we are actively working on travel industry i think that that's a good market for us in terms of open banking uh mm -hmm. we're also trying to shift a little bit and uh to diversify our portfolio right now uh, so i think travel industry is something that uh, could be great for open banking uh, hopefully a lot of travel uh, providers and uh, people working in, this in, in that industry can consider instant payments and so on. Uh, and then so which also part of the industry are you talking about then? The, uh, is it basically hotels? Is it uh, tour exactly. operators? Uh, exactly. Okay. Yes. And then, of course, e-commerce. Uh, also, e-commerce, I mean, uh, quite a wide industry and um, open banking payments can be very, very useful there. Again, as an alternative to the card payments. Uh, also, crowdfunding platforms, for example, is something that we're considering. There is a lot of need for open banking in those ones. Uh, so this is something we're looking at. Uh, so basically, this is our, let's say, roadmap uh, for the upcoming year. But uh, right now, still, the gaming industry is our customer that uh, we're uh, mostly taking care of and interact with. Also, yeah. some crypto, actually. We have some crypto merchants, and uh, uh, we are um, trying to see what's on that market. There is, again, a lot of risks there. There is uh, not everything in crypto industry we can, uh, we can accept, or not all every customer we can onboard. We have a very strict IML policies in that sense. 
finance and risk appetite as well. Uh, but uh, this is something we're also looking at and considering. Yeah, how, how do you see, because I think that you mentioned the word risk a couple of times, and I think that mostly relates to sort of the regulatory risk side, right? So uh, can you stay compliant while serving your customers uh, or are there any risks associated? Is that is that basically what you're talking about then with regard to, you know, potential money laundering, sanctions evasion, those kind of things? Yes, exactly. So obviously we want to be compliant in all the areas, especially as a regulated uh, a regulated business uh, we have mm -hmm. to comply with all the regulations so IML is something that we strongly uh, consider we're uh, we have a very strict IML risk uh, appetite policies and so on we have an amazing actually compliance department and uh, we have uh, created it during last three years and uh, we we are looking at the trends uh, in the regulation we are uh, participating in conferences and uh, also our employees in IML department are actively uh, learning and getting new certifications and following all the trends and following all the new regulations as well uh, in, uh, in terms of compliance and so on. Uh, so yes, uh, we have challenges there and sometimes we have to say no to coming customers and merchants because they don't align with our risk appetite mm -hmm. um, in terms of licensing as well in uh, in uh, I, I gaming gaming industry uh, we do look at the licenses uh, we do look at the policies of every country we're servicing in terms of open banking they have different regulations yeah. uh, so we're trying to evaluate those risks we are trying to be compliant in every area in each country we uh, we onboard customers and so on so yeah there is there are challenges but thanks uh, to our great compliance department i guess we're uh, doing quite well in You're that doing well nice yeah because i think that over the past years we've seen quite uh, quite a strong focus on uh, money laundering uh, kyc sanctions regulations a lot has come to the market and i think everyone in payments is completely overloaded with the requirements there uh, because it's a tough game to play right with uh, limited access to data a lot of uh, investigation capability you have to put up uh, and a lot of re reporting duties uh, and unfortunately not not yet that effective in catching the crooks uh, so that's 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 a bit of a shame but i can imagine that's really keeping you busy how do you balance that together with sort of let's say the the, the room for innovation and expanding your product and, and indeed developing your product um how do you do that is that is that a, do, do you manage to bring it all to one table and and try to figure out how to uh, div basically diversify your attention Yes, so basically it, it's uh, kind of divided in, in Noda, so we have our technical department, we are, have our product department, they're, they're working on the new products, uh, checking the market for the possible uh, possibilities of innovation or something new to bring to the market, but of course we are talking together with compliance as well as the sales department, we're trying to align our values so we don't cross uh, each other in some in some ways uh, but uh, yes we also in compliance department we do use uh, third party providers for example we have partnered up uh, with uh, Tether Ray, uh, the company that there is doing transaction monitoring for us just mm -hmm. recently, and we're very happy. Uh, so we're trying to also use our, the available software and so on to to be able to keep up with the compliance requirements. And uh, if we're happy in that sense, we can develop new products and uh, then see if we not going against any compliance issues and so on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think indeed that the, uh, let's say, specialized parties that keep, uh, you know, sanctions list and uh, PAPs and those kind of uh, ones are, I think, really useful to to uh, to make your process a bit easier. So uh, nice to hear about that. And um, on, on the basically the other risk side, if you talk about, uh, for example, cybersecurity or fraud, is that a, a hot topic as well on your end? Uh, something you have to deal with on a regular basis? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we didn't have uh, any like very particular uh, fraud cases. 
thanks God. Uh, but uh, we do have um, we do have certain policies and so on to uh, to make sure of the fraud prevention. And uh, in, uh, from the technical part, we use very known and very secure providers, such as uh, our technology is all based on Microsoft Azure, for example. We do go through the um, uh, PCI DSS compliance every year. We do pin tests. Uh, so from that sense, uh, as a, for cybersecurity and fraud prevention and so on, we have everything in place. We, we have been having this for since the actually the beginning of operations because Noda was basically a product that developed in the... Um, in a bigger group of companies that mm -hmm. was very kind of no, uh, already familiar with online presence, social platforms, fintech, and so on. So that is that was a company's practice already to make sure yeah. those things are taken care of. So we had kind of a backup of a bigger company to support us in that sense that everything has been done right from the very beginning. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. And I think that definitely is something right. It's uh, the uh, the state of the art uh, uh, processes and tools you need to keep everything safe. It's it's really useful if you're indeed uh, coming from a background where that's already commonplace uh, to actually keep that uh, keep that exactly. in place. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was very useful. Is that something you also need to work a lot on to educate your customers, for example, on uh, on uh, potential fraud or uh, cyber risks? Uh, is that something you also work with, uh, let's say, with your customers in some kind of an ecosystem where you say, okay, everything that we know about potential fraud cases, we need to somehow get our customers on board of that as well? Uh, we do have these conversations with customers. We do um, hope and usually we check if they have their own compliance in place before mm -hmm. onboarding them. So this is something that we strictly check. Uh, especially in the um, iGaming, gambling industries, for example. So we always check for them having their own anti-fraud in place and so on. Uh, but uh, we have, yeah, as, as I said, we have our own, uh, basically as a payment processor, we have our own things in place. And as we are taking care of the part of the payments, this is the part where you have to actually uh, think about the... Uh, things like that, like an anti-fraud and anti-money laundering procedures and so on. So we do hope our customers are aware and they're doing everything possible before, as for example, checking their end users and so on before the payments are initiated. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is some procedures where when we process the payment, um, we do, if there is an alert or anything like that, we do require some information from our customers on their end users. Uh, but usually we don't have any problems with that. Our customers are aware of the information they have to collect uh, and uh, of the things they, they have to have in place in order to prevent uh, anything like that. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> nice. Nice. So wh where I'm just really curious, right? So wh where do you see uh, Noda develop from here? Uh, now you mentioned already quite some markets that you're uh, looking into to expand. Uh, for example, from a product perspective, wh what is sort of on the horizon in the long run? Uh, should we uh, think about uh, activities in the metaverse or should we think about a much broader product portfolio? Uh, anything you can uh, perhaps uh, unveil already a little bit uh, towards our listeners? Um, we're, we're still brainstorming. Obviously, we're looking at market trends. Uh, one product that we are, uh, have launched, but still in kind of testing mode, uh, it will sound controversial, actually, but it's card payments. Okay. Uh, so basically, open banking is our core product, and we are kind of going against ourselves in this one. But there is a big market for it still. Uh, we do hope for a shift, but because uh, most of our customers are requ requiring both card payments and open banking payments, this yeah. is because they, for example, some customers are very comfortable with us already in terms of open banking. They see how well it works. Yeah. Uh, we decided that we can service 
we have technical capabilities of servicing this uh, part of the this need of the market as well. So we did launch card payments quite recently. We only offer it to a very limited amount of customers, uh, but. Uh, Yes, so this is something that uh, we are offering right now. Uh, all, uh, we are not an acquirer, so we do partner with some acquirers in that sense. Okay, nice, nice. I think definitely interesting to, to get a bit of a glimpse there of what you're what you're working on. Uh, always enough to do, probably, uh, but uh, nice to always see uh, what what concretely being thought about to bring into the market. Um, I think it's really, it's really nice. I think just I'm just trying to think out loud a bit. It's like, I mean, if you're based in Malta, I mean, a lot of people might, if they want to connect to you, could, of course, set up a Zoom call. But how would they actually be able to get in touch with you personally if they would want to? Are you going to any conferences somewhere this year? Uh, I mean, of course, we, we hope to see you at the Amsterdam FinTech Week uh, in any case, but there might be other places where you might be visible and findable. Um, anything you can uh, you can tell us already? Yes, of course. Uh, there is uh, obviously big conferences that we always attend every year. Uh, it's uh, Sigma because of our customer pool. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's Ice London also. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then uh, Money, of course, we're uh, going to be yes. there. Okay. Yes, Great. in June. Uh, and uh, the, the Amsterdam FinTech Week that you mentioned, we will be participating as well. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, those are the main ones. The main ones. There is some conferences in Brazil and Canada actually that we are planning to attend this year. Uh, I I do not recall the names, but the the main fintech conferences that there is one in June. Uh, there is oh, actually both of them in, in June, in the beginning of June. Uh, so we're going to be attending that also with our team. Uh, okay. Sigma Eurasia. We just participated actually in Dubai. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, to be honest, all the main ones that you can call in terms of open banking and fintech, and also the industries that we are uh, offering our products to, uh, such as uh, travel and gaming, uh, we we always basically conferences is our main source of communication with the potential customers. So we mm -hmm. do attend most of them. We have a big sales team, uh, and. Uh, yeah, we have a list uh, basically of conferences. This this is our practice uh, that we usually send a uh, bigger or smaller part of our team on every conference that where there is a possibility to uh, communicate, network, uh, and uh, find new customers or maybe get the new industry knowledge. Uh, so I guess all of them, <laughs> basically, exactly. we are attending. Yeah, nice. Now, there's definitely uh, several occasions where uh, we, we were able to meet each other. Uh, uh, so looking forward to that, uh, to see you in person as well. Um, yeah, I think it's been really nice to, to have a chat with you, Anastasia. I think it's uh, great to get some insights in uh, what's going on uh, behind the doors of, uh, of Noda uh, and to get some uh, your view of uh, what's happening in the market. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Definitely been really nice. So looking forward to uh, to hear more from you, of course, uh, into the future. And so for everyone uh, who's looking to contact uh, Noda and understand more about their business, we'll put here the uh, website. And uh, of course, the conference that were mentioned, like Money Trends 20 uh, or Amsterdam FinTech Week, might also be a good occasion to get to know Anastasia and her team. Thank you very much Thank for you. now. Thank you for listening and uh, enjoy your day. Thank you.